The first comic I'm going to read it will be entitled Spy Among Us, Part 1. By Daniele Rossi, myself. Earth's moon, long believed as being completely and utterly uninhabitable, but it ain't true. Uh, excuse me, that is absolute nonsense. We've had satellites survey the moon and take detailed maps, pointed telescopes at it. We walked on the moon, okay? And then the narrator says, yes, that is all quite lovely. However, believe it or not, all of the inhabitants of the moon are celebrating their national holiday, Lunar Day, with festivities throughout the day. And then Spud is seen addressing the crowd. Gather round over here, everyone. It's time for our annual presenting of our moon's very first significant practical joke on the people of Earth. If I can ask my lovely assistant to come on stage. You're my lovely assistant, Spud says incredulously to a woman holding up what appears to be cards. And she angrily replies, oh, shut up. Let's get this over with. And then Spud says, oh, for crying out loud. And he continues, many Earth orbits ago, my ancestor Spud the first to build a telescope and pointed it at the Earth. And then you'll see here that there's a yellow eye <laughs> that uh, the user can click on to receive more information, or rather to read more information about the girl, who turns out to be Spud's ex-girlfriend, Wilhelmina. So the caption reads, This is Spud's ex-girlfriend, Wilhelmina. The two were a celebrity couple on the moon before they broke up. Long story short, she's just psycho. Spud continues, He discovered that someone on Earth had done the same thing. Someone on Earth had discovered how to build a telescope and had aimed it at the moon. Spud the first was being watched. Knowing this means the lunar text of civilization will soon be discovered and thus putting an end to our practical joking, Spud the First bravely set off to do what no other lunar tick had done before. Sling shoot his way to Earth. Cleverly disguised as a meteor, Spud the First was unnoticed by anybody on Earth. Except for deploying a large elephant balloon for landing. Luckily, nobody saw him. Anyway, Spud the First reached the house of the earthling interloper, waited until the coast was clear. He took all of the earthling interloper's documents about our civilization and deployed the escape trampoline and headed back to the moon, where he told the rest of the lunatics of Earth's latest advancements in astronomical observation and the importance of keeping our civilization a secret, and the crowd all cheers, yay! Hooray! Yay! Yay! Then there's our rival civilization from Trinculo, a moon of Uranus. They are pent up on revealing our practical joking to earthlings. And then you'll see that there is uh, a yellow eye, again, a button that you can click on to learn Trinculo fun facts. Swipe to begin... Small dark moon of Uranus, rival civilization of Spuds. This moon's orbit goes in the opposite direction of other moons of, of Uranus. Named after the drunken jester in Shakespeare's The Tempest, Nuff said, Trinculo can also mean three butts in Italian. Pent up on revealing Spud civilizations being pent up on playing practical jokes on earthlings. Density, 1.5 grams per cubic centimeter. Escape velocity, 30 kilometers per hour. Chunk, created as a result of something stupid the Trinculians did. Volume, 3,054 square kilometers and filled with jello. 18 kilometers in diameter. Did you know Trinculians have great difficulty getting themselves to Earth and her moon? All because Jupiter is so big and constantly blocking their way. If they pass too close to Jupiter, they will be flung towards a random direction. Male, female. 8,735 attempts at revealing Spud civilization by telling Earth about their antics and counting. Success rate in reaching actual intended targets? Dropping like a brick. Do Trinculians know what they're doing? 27% say vaguely, 30% say not really, and 43% say nope. Intergalactic transportation by slingshot, just like Spud civilization. The end. Fortunately, they are an unintelligent bunch, never made it to the Earth in all their history, not even here on the moon. Hey, 
yells out a voice in the in the distance. Uh oh, a Trinculo spy! What here? Gasp! 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 Get him before he gets away. Man, he's a fast little little bugger. He's at the sling part. Stop him! Crap! He's heading towards Earth. Well, I'm going to stop him. But Spud, what if you're seen? I won't let it happen. I'll be vigilant and bring the spy back before you know it. This is certainly going to be one historic lunar day. Yeah, right, being a hero. Spud's just going to pick up Earth women. I'm keeping my eye on him. Continued. The end. You will also notice that I have a sign-up form uh, to sign up and be notified each time a new Super Spud comic is available. And then there's a privacy policy, subscribe button, you can also follow on social media, etc, etc. And then in the tradition of, well, traditional comic books, I had a letter from the cartoonist following the story. And I wrote, Welcome to the inaugural comic of Superspud.com's iPad edition. I hope you enjoyed reading this comic as much as I had fun writing and drawing it out. This comic was actually a proof of concept to see if my ideas for the web app would work. For one thing, I learned that having 20-ish panels slows down page load. You see, my style of graphical storytelling is long form. This was my first time trying to keep things as short as possible. Only, I'm an, advo- I'm an advocate for proper pacing and timing, so it's a challenge. Fortunately, I'm always up for challenges. I promise that part two will be much shorter. Signed, Daniela Rossi. And the next story I will be reading, or comic, will be Spy Among Us Part 2. And we continue our story with our intrepid protagonist Spud chasing an enemy spy en route to Earth to blab about Spud's moon civilization's big secret conspiracy against the people of Earth. Swipe to begin. I'm almost there. First Trinculo to go to Earth. Man, this is epic. And following close behind is Spud. Crap, he's entering the Earth's atmosphere. I have to stop him before he is seen and tells the Earth about our existence. And then the narrator continues. Fortunately, everyone was busy either BBMing. (laughs) Back then when I wrote this, Blackberry was all the rage. Everyone was busy either BBMing or playing Angry Birds on their smartphones to notice any happenings in the sky. And then you see there's a lemonade and free Wi-Fi stand nearby. Okay, now to upload the secret video I made back on Earth's moon, revealing everything their civilization won't be secret anymore. (laughs) I'll upload it to YouTube and soon all of Earth will know that throughout history, their seemingly desolate lunar neighbor was playing practical jokes on them. Okay, no one seems to have seen me. Now where did that little stinker go? Thank you for letting me use your laptop to upload my video. Gotta go. And then of course Spud's right behind him going, ah! And there is another button to press. And we find out who the woman at the lemonade and Wi-Fi stand is. This is, sort of, a caricature of my friend, Andrea. She was super kind enough to tinker around with the backend code of this site to get all the interactivity working beautifully. Check out We Can Build Her and see just how super awesome Andrea is. You rock. And of course, that's a link to her website, which I'll have in the show notes here, or the video notes. (laughs) Hey, hey, pardon us, says Bud. We're late for a costume party, Andrea says. Those were the strangest tourists I have ever seen. And then the guy sitting beside her says, what? And there is a button. Could this be Andrea's husband, Mark? Tall? Check. Sideburns? Check. Soul patch? Check. Glasses? Check. The only way to know for sure is if he's updating markblevis.com on his smartphone. Our hero Spud quickly ran off to find a secluded location to deploy his ever-so-powerful escape trampoline to get himself and his captured Trinculin back to the dark side of the moon. No relation to Pink Floyd. The Trinculin video went totally viral all over the internet. After returning on the moon, Spud yells out, Hey, I caught the Trinculo spy! They are right over there! And then the Trinculo thinks to himself, hey, Jupiter shifted again. This means I can make my escape. And Spud is still pointing at him. Everyone, over here! And the Trinculo thinks to himself, next stop, Trinculo. 
Darn it, he's on his way back to Trinculo, says Spud. And all of Earth knows about our shenanigans now. Oh, no, they don't. We've been monitoring the Earth news on the radio. They think the video is only puppets. Ha, 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 and everyone's laughing. And then there's the sign up to be notified. <laughs> and then again, the letter from the tunist. And let's see if I can read this <laughs> drawing. All that action in this part two was a lot of fun. However, I'm now running out of pens, coloring all, coloring in all that background space. Anyone want to sponsor me some pens? As I described in part one, the challenge this time was to squeeze in all that action into as few pages as possible. So the result is quite a drastically shorter sequel, but I hope you enjoyed reading it as much as I did drawing it. Another first for this web app is a sort of caricature. As described in the info button on the second page, my friend Andrea was kind enough to donate some time to help create some jQuery type interactivity. As a thank you, and it's not even enough as I'm etern eternally grateful for Andrea's hard work, I gave her a part in this episode. Caricatures aren't my specialty, but I'm always up for a design challenge, which means the character the caricature looks nothing like her, like her, except maybe the streaks of red hair. So this is more of an Andrea cartoon. I met Andrea and her husband Mark in the podcasting com community. They are great people and really into doing creative things for the sake of creativity. For example, Andrea does some pretty cool stuff with repurposing t-shirts into dresses and sweaters. And Mark created professional sounding radio documentaries for a podcast series he produced. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Check their many websites out at Weekend Rebuilder, Electric Sky, MarkBlevis.com, and just one more book, signed Daniele Rossi. And the next story I'm going to read is Wilhelmina, Tabloid fod Fodder. Well, there's a lot of here to read, so <laughs> Spud and so the Lunar News, the front page, Spud and Wilhelmina break up. So there's a picture of Spud, and underneath it says, I broke up with her. And then there's, and then beside is a photo of Wilhelmina saying, I broke up with him. And then the story says, the moon, yep. The moon's favorite celebrity couple have finally broken up. While it's been widely known that Spud and Wilhelmina's relationship was doomed right from the start, news of the couple's breakup came quite unexpectedly. What? The heck did he ever see in her, said a close friend of Spud. Spud is not the type to be desperate, but I guess mysteries abound. Cause of the disillusion is not yet known, but some say Wilhelmina is definitely the reason. Oh, come on. It's a no-brainer. One look at Wilhelmina and you have your answer, said a close friend of Spud. And then there's another headline saying hundreds of single women camp outside Spud's house. So this is a special non-interactive issue, as you'll see this little virtual sticker on the left there. So there won't be any buttons here to click on. And swipe to begin. Lies, all lies. It was I who broke up with Spud. Wait, what? I broke up with you because you're a psycho. What are you doing here anywhere, keeping my eye on you? You're in this fancy restaurant on the rebound, are we? I'm having dinner with my mother. I never liked her, dear. You really need to do something about your jealousy. Jealous? Me? Of you? Ha! The pie-eating contest with female contestants. And then there's a shot of the Lunar News where the headline says, Wilhelmina flips out at pie-eating contest. Remember the bookstore? You lingered a little too long in the women's magazine section. I was checking email on my phone. And then in the background is more lunar news <laughs> with the headline saying Wilhelmina totally trashes bookstore. The moon police were called to a scene of utmost destruction today at the Sea of Tranquility bookstore. This has Wilhelmina written all over it, said Sergeant Doolittle. A witness confirmed citing Wilhelmina hiding behind the automotive magazines watching Spud. Spud was allegedly checking his mobile phone when suddenly a sound not unlike that of a herd of elephants charging at a peanut vendor. And then you could see a partially hidden headline uh, saying something, something about you know, safety concerns public after Wilhelmina.
every time you see me with a female, any female, you fly off the handle. You need to move on. And then Wilhelmina says, I need to move on. I need to move on. And then Spud replies, I'm glad we both agree. And then the waitress comes, would you like some coffee, tea, dessert? Aha, says Wilhelmina. And then Spud smacks his forehead, oh, for crying out loud. And then we see another shot of the Lunar News with the headline, Wilhelmina arrested at Mannequin Factory. Fake body parts everywhere. And then the final scene is another shot of Lunar News with the headline, SWAT team surrounds restaurant for Wilhelmina-related incident. <laughs> the moon. The headline says it all, so we'll just fill up space with Laura Mipsum. Laura Mipsum, Dolores, sit, Amit, <laughs> etc., etc. And then, so you see uh, the sign-up for the newsletter, which doesn't, which is no longer active. <laughs> I just wanted to mention that. So uh, it ends, and then we uh, swipe for some more, and it's letters from the tunist once more. I hope you enjoyed this Wilhelmina retrospective as much as I enjoyed devising and drawing it. I'm a fan of gags like you see in the newspapers I included in the strip. This comes from reading too much Bloom County back in the day. In the early years of drawing Spud comics back in high school, Wilhelmina wasn't the super jealous spectacle she is now. This is a relatively recent change. I figured she'd provide much more comedy by being that type of ex-girlfriend. <laughs> and I must admit that I enjoy coming up with her scenarios. And the next comic I will be reading is called Meet the Sodium Bicarbonates. Swipe to begin. Did you know Rome, Italy is full of ancient Roman ruins? Of course you knew that. One of those ruins, named Torre Argentina, is home to a lot of cats. It's a cat sanctuary, and what the humans don't know is it turns into a cat jazz joint every night. And then on the right we have artist rendition may not be accurate. One very popular band is a sodium bicarbonate. And then there's a button. This cat has aspirations of flying. Oh, honey, sweetie, my darling, my darling, don't worry, I, will, I, will, I won't sing. <laughs> this cat loves hitching rides on the back of fire trucks. Wee! Thank you, everyone. You've been great. How I love that band. My favorite member is the one with the triangular ears. And then we get interrupted by Button. This cat likes being scanned and geolocated. How well this app mapped out this cat's geolocations. And it's showing the cat's been all over the world? Uh-oh. This cat loves perpetuating the myth about black cats bring, bring, bleh, bringing bad luck. And then we continue with our story. How nice. I'm her favorite. What, says one of the other cats. And then the other cats say, she was clearly talking about me. You? She was talking about me. Oh, really? And then there's a big fight. And like most bands, the sodium bicarbonate suffer from internal tension. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to any cat on Earth back on the moon, and then Spud is saying, man, I wish I could see the sodium bicarbonates in concert. And then you see the sign up again, the newsletter, and swipe for more. And again, letters from the Tunis. You're probably wondering why some of the sodium bicarbonates appear to be white while they are black in the pop-up info comics. I made some changes to their fur color when I made the pop-ups long after the comic. The differences in fur color slipped by me until I was coding everything together. Oops. I hope you can forgive me. Now, there is a continuation of this story, actually of all four stories. But first, let's go to character profiles. So we'll learn more about Spud, our intrepid protagonist, born and raised on the dark side of the moon, no relation to, to Pink Floyd. He now resides on Earth incognito, in broad daylight to report back to his lunar peeps for their favorite pastime, playing practical jokes on Earthlings. Wilhelmina, Spud's ex-girlfriend, while she'll never admit to still having feelings for him, her fellow females are warned never to even think about looking at Spud. Trinculo guy, a spy hailing from a moon of Uranus, this rival Civilization is pent up on revealing Spud's peeps' favorite pastime to Earth, but they are quite a bumbling bunch. Pazzo, whom we haven't met yet, the narrator and beaver that lives in the tree in Spud's backyard on Earth. This is the comic pages, what did you expect? <laughs> 
and the Sodium Bicarbonates, a jazzy feline quartet that can never finish a concert because they always end up fighting on stage. From left to right, pizzicato, piano, trumpet, desperate, whipped boyfriend type. Nervous ladies, he is so desperate for a date that he's always ready and willing to be your backup. Allegro, singer, happy-go-lucky, impulsive, fearless. He's your best friend until he has a girlfriend. Ambitious and quick to step all over you to steal your woman. He's not a bad cat. He knows she's better off with him than you. Intermezzo, upright bass. Nosy, likes listening to other people's conversations. This sneaky little bugger is more ninja than cats, which comes in handy for the group's misadventures. And pianissimo. Drums, unexpected heartthrob of the group, sedate, stutters. He's one of those guys you really hate because your woman will unceremoniously dump you for him. Okay, now here's a really long one. It's all it's all about me, the cartoonist. Well, hello there. I'm Daniele Rossi, creator of these Super Spud comics. Thanks for dropping by. And as you can see, there's a very photorealistic image of myself. I've drawn comics ever since I can remember. On walls, in my various high school notebooks, dirty windshields, napkins, and now the iPad. My influences are Looney Tunes, Peanuts, Bloom County, Outland, and Calvin and Hobbes. Spud was created sometime in the early 1990s. Of all the cartoon characters I ever created throughout my life, none resonated more with me and my friends than Spud. He is, a, he is a lot of fun to draw and plays into nuttiest scenarios I can think up, poor guy. Over the years, Spud mooned the UN, dated Wilhelmina, went for a joyride in a bus, was a cape superhero for a time, had a few mishaps in science and tried to drive standard. Most of my Spud comics are autobiographical and I'm still not allowed to enter UN premises. That was a bit of an exaggeration. Like all... Aspiring cartoonist, I had dreams of publishing Spud Comics. Fast forward to the internet age, I'm a digital media head with web skills and the tools to publish. I love experimenting with new digital tools, and this iPad edition of Superspud.com is one of those adventures. As you have prob- probably noticed, I'm a fan of the flicking feature. There is also a desktop version of Superspud.com where you'll find a bunch of tech jokes there. Like this one on the on the left. Had a great time drawing this comic. It's full of Twitter and internet memes I could think of and fit. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little artistic and actually get serious for a change, as you will see on the next screen. So the picture on the left, there's only one guy in the world who programs JavaScript. Everyone else just copies him. And that was actually a... Um, a quote from a friend of mine, Steve Harris, who told me that, and I thought it would make a great comic strip. More of my cartooning work at tiger.org, that's T-I-G-E-R-O-R-G, um, a companion website to my audio podcast, Stuttering is Cool, over at stutteringiscool.com. Yep, I stutter, and I'm damn proud of it too. Most recently, I co-founded Stutter Social, stuttersocial.com. It's an online support group using Google Plus Hangouts. It went viral too. I'm currently working on a buddy comic about stuttering. Spud will make an appearance in there too. My mediums of choice? It all starts with pencil and paper. I love my digital gadgets, but none of them can can ever compare to the tactile feeling of the paper and eraser marks on my hands. You've probably deduced that I enjoy creating black and white comics and that I like to use ink. For Super Spud, I use a regular pen. And I love my oil pastels. They produce such vibrant textured color, which you'll see in the video on the next screen. You know the drill, just swipe. And of course, there's no video. <laughs> uh, I, th- think it's, I think it was supposed to pop up. I love drawing. And when I'm not drawing or digital tinkering, I'm enjoying my other obsessions, going to the gym, listening to music, and shortwave radio oddities, amateur photography, and attending the latest social media meetup. Up for reading more about me? Head on over to danielerossi.ca. Tapping on this link will will let you get in contact with me via email. Well, that wasn't a very uh, accessible link back then. And here's a picture of the continuation of this comic. 
called Epic Fail as it slides down <laughs> the iPad, <laughs> the very glossy screen there. It's, it's not available yet uh, in stores. I have only made five copies, but it soon will be, I hope so. I'm trying to put it together and, you know, reprint it. And here's uh, that comic book that I told you that I wrote over there. Stuttering is Cool, A Guide to Stuttering in a Fast-Talking World. That is available. Go to stutteringiscool.com. And, well, thanks for watching and listening after all this time. <laughs>